sorry. And we need to flip this over. Oh. Hi everyone. Uh, one moment. I think I might be upside down. Okay, sorry, I need to rotate my phone. We are doing light fastness testing on all the things. So I have all the things at my desk, but I put my camera in backwards. So don't want to drive you crazy by having these pointed the opposite way during the whole stream. So instead I'm going to drive you crazy by you get to see my fingers for a while. Hey, how are you Dan? And, sorry. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, okay, let's get this all positioned. Wish I had a better way of setting this up beforehand. Oh, one moment. Sorry. And let's bring you out closer to here. And there. There we go. There we go. Okay, how are we? on light and I'm going to turn on the overheads. Hi everyone. Sorry to get my I definitely don't need more watercolor. I setting up this video has uh, sort of exposed some of my hoarding. <laughs> so, um, some of you got a bit of a the beginning of the video there was a sneak peek of just how much chaos this is um, I'm at a conference today and I thought oh this will be a simple easy video um, we'll see how much of this we get through I have a uh, course a workshop to be at at 4 p.m. in two hours so uh, we'll see how much I get through in that time but I've set up some light fastness testing sheets and I will be testing my main palette. Um, so just to be sure that all of the very light fast paints that I chose for my main palette are actually very light fast, I'll be testing everything in here. But then the two main purposes of why I decided to do my own light fastness testing uh, have to do with colors that are not in my main palette. Hi, Lana! Lana's sort of the expert on light fastness testing, so you can tell me what I'm, uh, what I'm doing wrong. Uh, so, actually, I probably should link to 
Lana's website, Sun and Colors, um, which I will do in the description after the video. But until then, uh, Lana, feel free to post your website. You're a mod now, so you can do that. Um, hi, Stephen. Oh, shoot. Sorry, I forgot water. I'll be right back. this video was um, my favorite watercolor pigment used to be Prussian blue and um, it turns out that many Prussian blues are fairly unstable it does depend a little bit on manufacturing um, but uh, Prussian blue you may know as the pigment that's used in blueprints or cyanotypes, uh, so it will fade in sunlight in some cases if it's not, um, if the reaction that forms it isn't fully finished, it will fade in sunlight. Now apparently if you leave it in the dark afterwards it will regain some of that color. Um, it's also unique in that most pigments stay pretty stable and then, uh, here I'm gonna get a notebook to draw this, but, uh, so, um, the way that colors lose saturation over time usually is it takes a certain amount of energy for them to start losing saturation and then they drop off. And so that's what you'll see with a lot of not so light fast colors. Hi, Kevin. Um, but then Prussian blue does a weird thing where um, it has a, I'm not familiar enough with the chemistry to properly explain this, but it drops off initially and then it stabilizes. Um, but this initial drop-off can be fairly substantial depending on the uh, manufacturing of the pigment. So it's listed as light fast and that's if it's been made perfectly, I guess. Um, and a lot of watercolor Prussian blues are not. So Prussian blue and watercolor does tend to visibly fade. And so I had to make the heartbreaking decision to remove my favorite paint from my palette a couple years ago. And ever since then, I've been wondering whether there's any way that I could reintroduce it. And sort of what I've decided is I'm going to test Prussian Blues from a number of different brands. I've got tubes from a whole bunch of different brands. I'm going to see which ones, if there's any that don't fade, and then then I can be confident in that tube or that pan. And then if I have a brand that I had a tube from that didn't fade, then I'll buy a whole bunch of tubes and test those. And then I can be confident in the specific Prussian blue that I use, even if Prussian blues in general are variable. So that was sort of the idea behind this. I got my hands on a whole bunch of different Prussian blues and then I decided to extend that idea. So I'm also testing um, 
dioxazine violets, which are another pigment which uh, is generally considered fairly light fast, but occasionally there's an issue and I do like using it sometimes. So in that case, I don't have quite as many because I'm not, it's not unlike Prussian blue, which was really, it was my favorite, favorite pigment. The dioxazine violet wasn't my favorite pigment. Hi, Kevin. Um, sorry, Lana says it can react in some mixes too and then the fading is permanent. At least I've read that. Yes. Um, it, it can oxidize uh, when in um, contact with some metals, I think. So this is the issue with, uh, for instance, there's Prussian blue and then there's Antwerp blue. Antwerp blue has zinc white in it. And zinc white tends to react with not only Prussian blue, but a number of other paints. Um, so if you like, it's a reason to maybe avoid using Chinese white um, or to, to avoid using specifically Antwerp blue, which has uh, PB27 and PW4 in it um, because those, those will tend to fade. So, uh, yeah. Neuron? Uh, Neuron is somewhere. He'll probably join us at some point. Um, sorry. So then I'm testing some PB23s. I don't have very many. I didn't buy any for this um, test. I just, I had some already. So... I have some PB23s. I did, however, buy a PB37 from Roman Schmal, uh, which is a different dioxazine violet pigment, which there's some claims that it's a little bit more uh, stable. So I'll test that as well. And then um, the other like weird pigment is PG8, which is um, a really, really beautiful green color. It's a chelated iron pigment. Um, so it's a metal complex pigment. It's actually related to some of my other favorite pigments like Nicolaso yellow. Um, but it's a fairly unstable one. And again, variable. And I've heard varying reports where some people say, no, 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 it's fine. Um, and others say, no, it fades right away. Uh, I didn't put too much effort into it. I have two versions from Shinhan that are different shades, as well as a pan of White Knights, and I figured I'd try that as well. Then I've got all the paints in my palette, all of them. And then I've got some other weird pigments that I decided to just try out. Uh, so a couple of different yellows. I've got a Hansa Yellow Light PY3 as well as a PY61, which is uh, Roman Schmal Aquarius's lemon yellow. He specifically sent me these for this purpose. He feels like his lemon yellow is more stable than PY3, but he had to. He felt like he had to include PY3 in his line because it's such a common pigment. Um, and so he wanted me to test them and so he sent them specifically for this purpose. I've got some other rare pigments, discontinued pigments. Um, Kimberly Crick just commented on my channel that uh, P064 is rated as very light fast, but is not. Um, so I'm gonna test that as well. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to try to get started here because I just have a lot to get through. Oh, um, and I guess the last thing is I recently started drawing in inks. Um, so if you followed the last couple of my, um, live streams, I've been drawing in fountain pen ink, but fountain pen ink is a little bit tricky because they don't list which pigments are used. Um, in fact, most are made with dyes, but you can get pigment inks. However, not all of the pigment inks are <laughs> light fast. Um, 
some of them are tested, but you still don't know what's in them. So I also gathered up a whole bunch of different pigment ink uh, from different manufacturers for fountain pens, and I will also be testing those. I'll get through as much as I can. Hi! Hi, Alex, how are you? Um, I will get through as much of this as I can um, in the couple hours that I have. <laughs> But I realized as I was preparing for this video that I actually have a ridiculous number of pigments and a ridiculous number of things to test and I should stop buying stuff because this is getting out of hand. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I also used up an entire roll of this beautiful washi tape. It's actually kind of sad that I just reached for it. We tend not to be too precious about things. Um, then realize that I actually used up the whole roll on just these swatch cards. Gilmore says, maybe one of you know it. Is there a substitute to the old formula of Daniel Smith transparent pyro orange, the one with an almost red mass tone? No, I haven't found one. Um, Yeah, sorry, I don't don't really have an answer to you. Um, there's quite a few different transparent pyrrol oranges out in the world now, but they mostly seem to be the somewhat more orangey tone. Okay, so here I have a uh, lee. That was quite the blob. Uh, mostly dried up tube of Windsor Newton. Uh, Prussian blue from way back in the day. Uh, anyway, so I do have a few open spots on the last sheet of these. Are there any colors in particular that any of you would like to see tested? Because I probably have them because apparently I'm a hoarder. And uh, yeah, I would be happy to test that out for you. When I get some rest, we'll put Dante in charge. No, I didn't, Dante! Okay. Mm, so, yeah. Some crazy pink. Like you want, like, um, like an opera? I can probably find an opera somewhere. I think Ev sent me some opera. If you have it, maybe genuine Quin Gold versus the Hue. I have genuine Quin Gold. I'm trying to think if I have a Hue hiding somewhere within reach. I don't know that I have the Hue. I'm pretty sure I have genuine Quin Gold like on my desk somewhere. Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, I will add Opera. And then we will try M. Graham. So this was, this tube was what was on my palette. This was my favorite paint for a really, really long time. It was so difficult to remove it. Um, but I, since I do paint, well, so then the other thing is, at the time, I was mostly painting for private clients, like people who would, I mean, to be honest, I wasn't making that much money anyway, but I was selling paintings to people. Um, it's less of an issue for illustration. So 
uh, depending on where my career goes, like if I'm doing more illustration, I may end up just reintroducing it, but I just, I don't like having things on my palette that I have to think about where I can use them. Ugh, just blending in. Um, so, that's my issue, because I want to make sure that anything I have, I can just reach for without worrying too much, like anything that I have on my main palettes. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's an issue. Do you have either the Rotring Black Ink or the Lamy T51 Black Ink? Then I'd be interested in the light fastness test of those. I do not. Sorry. Or Windsor Newton Indigo. I also don't have that. Mm hmm. Maybe I have that. I don't think I have that handy. I might be able to add that later. Hi, Paula. Whoa, this is weird. Okay, this has some like. I don't remember it having this much texture. Next we have Daniel Smith. So I'm trying to have both a mass tone and a watered down version um, because a lot of paints will be more stable in mass tone and then will be less stable in tits. I'm gonna have to paint something all in Prussian blues after because I think I'm just gonna fill this entire palette. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. Oh, this Daniel Smith. There's definitely a variation between the Prussian blues. So I spoke to Roman Schmal about. I let him know that I was going to be light fast testing things, including his paints. Um, and I asked if he had any comments that he wanted to put in about, you know, some questionable pigments, uh, specifically things like uh, Prussian blue beforehand. Um, and he said that he tested his and he thinks his is light fast. Um, and he also said that he tested a number of different Prussian blue pigments and that the more greenish ones tend to be more stable. So that was an interesting piece of insight. I don't know if, like, I don't know, I have no basis for that other than what Roman Schmal said. Um, but I guess we'll see. It's interesting. It was an interesting statement. says, if you don't have the indigo, then I may need to unsub. Just joking, I'm in love with that color. I really like the shade of that color, um, but I guess I prefer to, uh, like when you have a, a, a paint that's a mix of two pigments, um, two or more pigments, I, I tend to prefer alternatives where I can have both of the colors on my palette and then try to mix them myself. Um, But I totally understand um, indigo blue is just sort of a mood. I do have genuine indigo from Shinhan, um, and I will be testing that.
Is the core pyrrole orange a more reddish or orangish version of the pigment? It's not quite as red as, I would say it's more orangish, um, but the, the main thing is that the Daniel Smith, I mean, okay, first of all, look at this ridiculous thing that I did to my hands. They're covered in fresh blue now. Um, uh, sorry, distractions. Um, I would say that basically the, the old Daniel Smith version was like a really, really red. Like it was like, it was barely not even orange. It was, it was just red. It was like a vermilion color. It was a very transparent vermilion. Um, and they're like other PB 71s are not that. Um, so I don't like core might be a little bit redder than some other versions of PB or PO 71, sorry. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's not like the, it's definitely not as red as that one version. Oh boy. That mission gold one is gorgeous. Ooh. Um, so in, I think it was Teo's light fastness tests, he found that his Mission Gold um, Prussian Blue didn't fade, but um, he also didn't have as much fading generally as some other people have experienced. So I guess maybe he just doesn't have a lot of light into his windows. So I don't know whether I will experience the same thing. So I'm setting this up. It's about autumn equinox here in Canada. Um, so we're going into winter, which means that we will have less sun and less direct overhead sun, but it does mean that because of our low sun angles in the sky, if I put my um, tests in a south facing window, they'll get sun through the entire day, whereas um, in the summer they would be shaded uh, by the overhangs on our house. So I am actually, I'm probably going to do about a nine month test. I'm going to do six months over the winter when the, the tree outside my window sheds its leaves um, in a south facing window and then I'm going to pull them out in about five months, um, check on them and then move them to a west facing window for the summer. Okay, uh, so next we have the Roman Schmal Prussian Blue. Oh boy. It's been a half hour already. And I've only got these this many done. I wanted to read the paper on the Prussian Blue because I was very intrigued about the text. It seemed to me that they claimed in that paper that no Prussian Blue pigment is like fast. I didn't, yeah, I scanned it, but I didn't really get to reading it very carefully either. That would be interesting. Um, Lana, it's linked in my last video, in my last live stream, I think, or maybe it's the one before. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's also in my Discord. You'll just have to scroll back. Okay, so this is the Roman Schmal Prussian Blue. Let's see. Here. Oh, that's also really gorgeous and dark. I like that. Very clean. Well, I do hope that that. 
<laughs> I do hope that either this uh, Mission Gold or this Roman Schmaller are more light fast because they're both gorgeous. <laughs> Oh man, man, I love this color so much. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> why is it not light fast? I want to use this. Hi, Barbie. Okay, well, this is very sad. This is a very sad experience for me because it was so difficult, so difficult to, put, to pull Prussian blue out of my palette, but it's been years and I've just like not used it. <sighs> but now I'm swatching and now I can, looking at this, I remember why I love this color so much. I'm sad, guys. It's pronounced Sciart or it's pronounced Sciart. Like science art. So then this is the Jackson's one. It's not quite as rich as these two above it. I also wonder whether I'm gonna have a problem because of my water. And I think I just kind of have to accept that, but um, we have very hard water where I live, um, which is to say there's a lot of dissolved minerals, particularly our two big ones, or three big ones, are calcium, magnesium, and iron in our water locally. And um, I wonder whether it will react than with the, like for example, the iron. Um, but since I'm not, I, I don't trust myself to reliably use distilled water in the studio, I think that's a little bit ridiculous. Um, I am just using the, what I would usually use, which is just the tap water. They, there's another solution to the light fastness issue is become very famous and use whichever pigment you like. So it would be a problem for museums and... Con <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was going to go for the perhaps slightly easier road of just focus on illustration where light fastness doesn't matter. <laughs> I can just paint in sketchbooks and have it reprinted. That is something I have always wondered about. If the water one uses has a lasting impact on the paints. Yeah, so I can tell you for absolute certain that our water locally um, does have an impact on the behavior of paints. They granulate differently. Um, it's, it's very, very noticeable with um, M. Graham paints which have, M. Graham paints have a, like a weird texture separation issue with a lot of their paints, um, but it's definitely amplified by the minerals in our water locally. Um, and I went through a phase where I tried to work around it by using distilled water, but the truth is I'm, it's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna use the water that I have available, so.
Alex says I agree with Gabor 137%. That's a very specific percentage. Steven says paint with turmeric and coffee. Well, that would definitely fade. Okay. Sally says, Prussian blue, beautiful color, painted, clean brush. Yes, so I am going to have to abandon you in a little while. Um, I'm going to do the purples first, but you can see that my, my water is already kind of an exciting color here. Paolo says, maybe you should use distilled water. Yes, so I, maybe, um, and I did try that. Uh, I am not the kind of fussy person who's going to remember to keep enough distilled water on hand and go out to the store and get more or order more when I run out. Um, we do get distilled water delivery um, for our humidifiers in the winter and um, so i should actually call them and get some more um and sometimes i do paint with distilled water but i can't i don't feel comfortable guaranteeing that i always will and so i feel like i have to test for the worst case scenario and the worst case scenario is i'm going to use the the water that comes out of the tap I can also suggest vodka instead of water and it won't freeze in the Canadian winter. Yes, that is also wonderful. It has the somewhat disadvantage that uh, vodka is very expensive in Canada. We have very high alcohol taxes here. <laughs> we have lots of water though. <laughs> and rocks and rocks and trees and lakes and rocks and trees and water. Okay, so this is the Windsor Newton version of PV23. Thirty-seven percent is the I mean business maximum percentage. None of this one hundred and ten nonsense. Noted. Thank you. Okay. Next. This is why I have the little core palette. Uh, let's try the core PV twenty-three. Definitely a different shade than uh, Windsor Newton, isn't it? Good. Okay, I have apparently got some Prussian blue mixed in. That's unfortunate. much pigment and then of course this being core it just mm. spreads like mad okay and then just for fun I also have a Roman Schmal uh, dioxazine violet this is made with a different pigment which uh, Apparently, yeah, the core dioxazine purple is so nice, isn't it? Um, 
the uh, the Roman Schmoll one is made with PB37, which is currently, currently they're the only brand that makes it with this pigment. Um, and Graham used to use PB37. It's, according to some people, it's more stable. It's also a dioxazine violet pigment, very similar chemical structure, but um, might be more stable or might be just less used. It's a little unclear to me whether it's just more stable, you know, because nobody's tested it, so nobody can say that it's unstable. <laughs> this is why I'm testing it. It's beautiful. It's a more slightly more reddish shade than um, than the. Uh, PB23. Oh, I really like this. I hope it's uh, light fast because I want to use it. <laughs> I'm going to be so disappointed when these results come out. <laughs> All these pretty colors. Oh my goodness. Are you swatching on cotton paper? Yes. I'm swatching on arches. Or arch. Um, I, uh, I wanted to test on like a representative sample of what I'm going to be painting on. And the other thing is some paints can react with brighteners in paper, which can throw off your results. So I don't paint on paper that has brighteners in it. So, so I don't need to worry about that. So I wanted to test on the actual paper that I'm actually going to use. And do you know, happen to know if the My Mary Heavy palette can hold full pans? I'm longing for the 18 half pan palette, but I want to use full pans. I can answer that question. Um, I mean, I can also hand it. Yeah, that's, uh, Ed just gave the answer. So the, the My Mary palettes are the same as these guys. Um, they have these little dividers in between here. And you'll see in this case, this was divided for half pans, but you can just fold it down. So the full pans do fit in, you just have to fold down the dividers, every second divider. Okay, next, Shin Hans. Wait, I feel like I'm missing one. Ugh. Here we go. Where did I put these? Sorry, misplaced the paint. There's one. Like the color of that tin. I'll be giving away a tin like that very soon. Or you can buy it from me. I have a whole bunch of them. I ordered them from the manufacturer in China. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to go clean my water. I'll be right back.
I need to rejigger this. Oh boy. Okay. Put this here. If you ever need to see a doctor, I strongly recommend it not be on a Tuesday and not be the day immediately before or after a long weekend. Just right now. Look at the rest of the day. Oh. Okay. Clean up this brush a little bit. You should show both colors of the tints. Uh, do I have a purple one handy? Okay, so since people ask, there's a teal and there's a purple. And uh, one day in the middle of the night, I uh, decided to order 30 of them from a manufacturer in China um, for workshops that I can't run right now because of the plague. <laughs> so now I have a lot of these. Okay, back to swatching. You need teal one. Well, send me a message on uh, Discord or something. Did I? Did I switch? So this is a little confusing because this has a sap green and a. Yeah, okay, that is not good then. I want both. Christmas is coming. Yeah. I remember this being deeper. I'm a little confused by the color that I'm seeing here. Like, did it fade in the tube? Oh, I have been hating the new watercolor, the new YouTube watercolor trends. They kind of rub me the wrong way, but I'll be positive. Um, okay, but you can't lead with that and not tell me what you're talking about, Paolo. What are you talking about? <laughs> what trends? What trends are these which you hate? So this is a very weird PGA, um, but it does say it's PGA on the tube, so we'll see. Um, if this is a single pigment green, that's sort of unique. Very pretty. I really like this color. It's just like non-stop, like, oh my goodness, all these pretty colors, I want them all, but they're all probably just going to fade. Okay, next. Adding black or white to your paints. Um, are you talking about the super granulating paints? Or like the pastel sort of, I don't understand the, the pastel, like the adding white. I do sort of understand the adding, not black, but like very, very granulating black. I've done that.
Yeah, so I like I did a I did a whole commission where I mixed everything with um, PBK eleven. Um, it's not really about making it darker; it just adds that granulation. Okay, well, here we have supposedly the same pigment times three. <laughs> they look nothing alike. <laughs> So, I don't know, maybe they'll fade differently, too. What's that lovely green? Ev, you sent me this lovely green. <laughs> yeah, that is the PGA you sent me. Uh, this is the White Knights PGA. This, these two are the Shinhan PGA. So they have a sap green and a hooker's green. I remember the hooker's green being a lot darker than this. I'm very confused by what I'm seeing here. Um, Cause I remember like this specific tube of paint looking more like this one. I'm so confused. Okay. One sheet down, only nine more to go. Um, okay, next we're getting into my main palette. Hipster Alex. So I don't know if I really explained what I'm going to do with these sheets, but I'm going to cut, I'm, I'm making one big swatch so that it matches up and there's like no question of what the saturation was on each one. Um, and then I'll cut it down the middle here. Um, and one side I'll put in an envelope in a drawer and then the other side I'll hang in my window. Oh, you have the PG-23 and PG-8 next to each other. I love mixing um, violets with greens. It's like my favorite thing. They mix so beautifully. Um, and I feel like a lot of that first sheet is just making me sad because it's all going to fade away. <laughs> anyway, whatever. We'll deal. These ones, I will be surprised if any of this fades, because I did try to choose my my uh, main palette colors for things that are quite um, quite fast.
Anyway, I'm sort of rushing through this because you've seen these paints a couple times before now. If you followed my live streams. If not, I'll be posting a blog post. I don't know, someday. And I have made this a little bit too yellow, I think. Just don't splash too much water on it. Um, let's try this again. Your video is watching the new Roman Schmal Aquarius colors is a treat. Thanks, Ev. Yeah, apparently people like swatching videos better when they're really zoomed in like that, so no problem. I can zoom in. Also, I've accidentally been recording in 4K for a month, so I guess you get 4K content. I tried to watch it in 4K, but my laptop wasn't strong enough. I need more RAM. Uh, well, I mean, it'll be available when you uh, get more RAM. Enjoy the video too. If you don't pay attention, you dethrone Dennis in swatching. Oh, Denise. Haha. <laughs> oh, well. It's not a competition. I watch Denise's videos. I watch, okay, so I put swatching videos just like as, <laughs> as like a calming thing. Um, and I'll watch them even for things that I've already swatched myself. Like, I don't. It's not, it's not about the information necessarily. It's just like, oh, look, someone's swatching pretty colors. swatch stamp you used, how do you deal with the transparency staining icons having the line through them? Oh, yeah, that's kind of annoying. I really don't, I also don't like the little stars because they're printed on, so what am I supposed to do with the little stars? Um, the, for semi-transparent, I will hash a line, and then for, um, like, so for fully transparent, I'll just leave it with a line through. For semi-transparent, I'll hash a line. For semi-opaque, I'll fill in one half. And then for fully opaque, I'll fill in the full thing, for example. Ocho is also a champion of swatching. Swatching is delightful. I love swatching. I don't love um, all the prep involved with swatching. <laughs> Okay, next. What I want to do is 
Okay, enter queen on d. So people have mentioned, well, you could just use like anthroquinone instead of Prussian. And I mean, I do like this. This is another one of my favorite blues, but it's um, a lot redder. So it doesn't mix the same beautiful greens. And like a different sort of moody. Uh, says, dude, I'm currently prepping swatches for the whole RSA range. <gasps> Ev, does that mean you're getting the whole RSA range? What? What? Hi, Lise. I'm so excited. Are you getting all the colors? I wish, but no. Oh, okay. I'll calm down. I mean, to be honest, like you have the, the entire Renaissance range. What, how do you handle that many colors? Like, I don't, I'm delighted that I got all of the Roman shawl that I got, but I don't know what to do with this many colors. <laughs> Semi-transparent and semi-opaque are really weird terms. What's the difference between those terms? For me, they, they seem like they have the same meaning. The way I understand it is semi-opaque is slightly more opaque than semi-transparent. It's just an extra level. So you have fully opaque, semi-opaque, semi-transparent, and then transparent. I realize I don't have the swatches ready for that range and for white knight, so that's what I'm doing. I haven't figured out what to do with so many colors except Rolly Fully in the Mountain of Tunes. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. So. Next we have halo blue yellow shade. This is a whole bunch of color. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. So pretty. I think some brands just cite transparent, semi-transparent, opaque, and just skip semi-opaque altogether in their listings. Yeah, it just allows better clarification on where it falls on the spectrum. Yes, well, so that's the other thing. And that's the other thing that's weird about the swatches is like, there's a triangle, there's a square, there's a circle, but not all brands are consistent about which is which. So in general, I find like getting that information down in a way that's understandable is a little bit confusing. I just do my best. Um, I sometimes even forget, like sometimes I'll just forget to fill those things. Um, not all of the information is always available from every brand. When it is available, they use different systems. I just, I put in as much as I can and just deal with it. Make it up as I go along. Um. 
And he says doing the Donald Duck muddy bath, but with watercolor too, it sounds doable for some of you for sure. <laughs> yes. I mean, you're seeing some of the disaster on my desk right now. Like, uh, there's clearly some porting issues here that need to be addressed. I did not include, Lana says, I did not include the semi opaque and sun colors too, because as some brands don't have that distinction, semi. Transparent would not be clear. Right. Yes, exactly. Lisa says, nah, like overkill is not your style at all. It's not like this is your favorite kind of kill or anything. <laughs> That's why we get along so well. Okay, um, let's pick up some of this. So I often have like just a little bit of yellow in this pan. Um, I don't work clean, so these colors are a little mixed up. And again, we're just going to accept that. And then we have Paraline. Okay. And once again, we have messed up an entire <sighs> jar of water, which I'm now spilling. There's no kill in over, there's no kill like overkill, Lise. There really isn't. He says, if watercolors could stop being so pretty, I would have way more money in the bank. <laughs> yes. Yep. Okay. I'll be right back. Up, chug, 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 chug. Okay. Next. Next, next, next. Let's clean this up. Okay. And uh, continuing on. We have new appetite. Make sure that I can get as much of this out. The 
Dante just did a dance for me. I had to watch. Aww. Dante. Okay. So, hopefully that's fine. Next we have Potter's Pink. Blue Appetite Genuine looks really lovely. I have mixed feelings about it. It is very lovely, but it does have a sort of gummy consistency to how it spreads. Like it, it's very granulating, but it leaves some, like it doesn't disperse quite like I'd like. And also it's a little bit tricky to re-wet. Um, it hasn't been so bad yet, but uh, we're heading into the heating season in Canada and when it gets really cold out here it also gets really dry inside um, and so then our, our watercolors just become rocks uh, yeah so I have mixed feelings um, I was I was just actually talking to Kimberly Crick had commented on my swatching video and so she was saying that you know Oh, Daniel Smith, uh, Potter's Pink rewets just fine. Um, it really depends on where you are. Uh, so I find Daniel Smith paints in particular, also some, some, uh, Windsor Newton, just they turn to rocks. They don't want to rewet. Um, I'm finding that the blue appetite is drying harder than I would like, and it also has that weird gummy thing to it. But I do really like the granulation, so as of yet, we're a little bit on the fence about that one. If somebody has a suggestion for like a deep blue, like an earthy deep blue that's um, light fast, uh, I think I've heard Soda Light suggested as well, also from Daniel Smith, but that it's a little bit better behaved than the blue appetite. We'll Oh, okay, the paper about Prussian blue. I agree with Lee about, about, what do you agree with me about? <laughs> Alex says, Lee, I can send you a picture of some swatches later if you want. I have the Soda Light. I have Soda Light swatches because um, I got the, the, like, the extra large dots of it. Um, and I think I was pleasantly surprised with it. I just... I don't know. Something something hadn't clued in for some reason. I didn't buy it. Which one did Ocho do a showdown on? Wasn't it Lunar Blue? That's like fast, right? Uh, yes. Lunar Blue, though, is just a mix of Lunar Black and Phthalo Blue. So I would just use that mix. If I wanted to, if I wanted to interview. Like, I think I want something a little bit earthier. You know what I mean? Like less of a separating effects paint and more like an actual just blue earth where the granulation itself is blue, if that makes sense. Mine dark blue is lovely, but I don't know if it's like fast. Uh, yeah, I was gonna add that to the swatches today. I have it somewhere. I had also, um, heard the same thing, um, but I couldn't find it. So I guess it's not going in the swatches today. I might end up adding it later. Sorry, my mistake. I found Daniel Smith Mayan blue and I found it very gummy. I used the small tube and never again. Right. Real Mayan blue should be light fast. Yes, yeah, so apparently it's not. There's a lot of, there's a lot of lore about it being 
light fast. Um, and it might be more light fast than the indigo that it's made from, but it's not actually light fast. Um, so Mayan blue is a, uh, it's a, an indigo dye precipitated on a calcium carbonate base. Um, which makes it more light fast than an indigo dye, but still not quite as light fast as other pigments. This is why we need to fund, fund sun and colors. That is correct. Hi, Renea. Hi, Renea. Vivianite is lovely. Hi. Oh. Yes, so that's another one. I got Vivianite from, um, sorry, from Roman Schmal Aquarius. I was super excited about it. And then Kimberly Crick mentioned to me that it has the same issue as Malachite, where it's not very stable. You can't win. I just, like, I wish that there was more better information out there about these things. Myron Blue Deep is not completely light fast PDH, you're not sure about the other one. Uh, I think that they are both, I think the issue is the same with both. Um, if I understand what's going on with the Mayan colors generally, I think that's a Mayan colors in general issue, is that they are a dye precipitated on a calcium carbonate base, that's what Mayan colors are, and that that improves the light fastness of the dye, but it doesn't actually make it perfectly light fast. The ones the Mayans made is real light fast. The, sure. Granted, um, but uh, the ones we make now are not performing the same way. Mayan orange and Mayan yellow are the only Mayan colors. Well, yeah, so there's a company that's making all of these Mayan colors, and it's unclear what they're even using for some of the, like, the Mayan yellow and the Mayan orange and, like, is it a dye or are they just, or is it, you know, a more stable pigment? I have a person in my department who studied it. That's cool. What did they use for the paint and made the binder influence it? It's unfortunate because the mine blue is so gorgeous. Yes. That's the theme of today's video, is all the pretty colors that I want to use in all the paintings. Like, okay, first of all, look at this beautiful sheet, guys. It's so pretty. I want all of this. I want to use only these colors all the time, and yet I'm going to paste this in a window and it's all going to fade. Ah. Maybe I just need to only work for reproduction. <laughs> I do not sell originals. Um, the other thing that I had considered is I could potentially just frame everything behind um, UV glass, and I could uh, spray everything with like UV spray. Um, I just, I don't really want to depend on that, but there are days where I'm like, I just want to paint with Prussian blue and PGA and um, what's the other one? Alizarin crimson is also gorgeous. Like genuine alizarin crimson is so pretty. Um, and then I don't. But maybe, maybe someday. This could be a limited palette for painting. Right? Right? Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> I feel like, and even if you added in a few like other muted colors, like like a like a sienna or something. Magnesium aluminum phyllosilicate. That's the original Mayan blue base, you mean? Original gamboge. Um, like the gamboge. Renee, are you talking about the gamboge gum or um, nickel dioxide? Okay. Also, I guess the other question is, uh, was, Paolo, was the, in the case of original Mayan violet, was it applied as a watercolor or as, um, like, was there some other binder in play? Like if it was oil paint, then things that might not be stable in watercolor would be stable for much longer with something with a thicker paint film. These are fascinating conversations. I'm really glad that I found this little community of people who will have them with me. Um, because the truth is that there's a lot of artists out there who are like, okay, why are you talking about life past? And I was like, you're talking about science. I don't want to talk about fading you. The original non life fast Gamboge, the Gamboge gum, I've never tried it. Is it, is it pretty? Are you going to make me want to try it and then I'll buy it and then I'll be sad again? This is what's about to happen. <laughs> Daniel Smith loves some marketing. Oh my goodness. So guys, yesterday I'm at this conference, like I'm taking, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, on a break from the conference, right? this moment, but I'm going back at 4 p.m. Um, I'm at this conference and uh, yesterday there was a presentation by um, the like one of the directors from Daniel Smith and Jessica Greenleaf from Greenleaf and Blueberry. I asked the guy from Daniel Smith about the um, like I tried to phrase it very nicely about, because he was talking about how they have some, you know, patented process for making their Primatech colors, you know, m preserving the color of their minerals and they only use minerals and whatever. And so then I asked a sort of pointy question about amethyst, like, okay, well, how do you handle um, these crystalline pigments that have this crystalline minerals? where the color is just because you have all of these laminar layers of uh, very transparent, very light valued, um, you know, glass on top of each other and it just builds up the color. Like if you break that up, how would you end up with a very dark pigment? It got ignored. I'm like not very impressed with that. I'd like to have an answer, please and thank you. Babbler says, since I mostly paint for myself and in sketchbooks, I'm not fussy about light fastness. I will also start using a rosary crimson too. It's one of the most beautiful colors. It's gorgeous. Um, anthraquinone red, PR177, is not perfectly light fast, but it is um, at least it's the synthetic version of uh, genuine um, alizarin crimson. 
and it is slightly more uh, light fast than genuine alizarin crimson. So that's a something that you could consider if you want something that's you know it'll fade, but not as much. Uh, so that's a thought. Or just use alizarin crimson is beautiful. I totally understand why people like to use it. Um, it just fades. Uh, I don't know. I, I've been doing a little bit more like actual illustration work where people aren't buying the original um, lately. And so if, if that was the bulk of my work, I might consider just reintroducing all of these less, uh, less perfectly stable pigments. Just go wild with them. Ocho described a lot of the Daniel Smith color descriptions as this waffly and I love it. Val says, hello, hi Val. No idea what waffly means. He dodged your question. Yeah, he dodged my question. Well, okay, to be honest, it wasn't entirely his fault. The moderator dodged my question. The moderator answered several other people's questions that were, or like it was up to the moderator to ask the panelists and the moderator just ignored my question and then said, I'm clearing the chat. So I'm a little bit salty about it because I didn't get an answer. <laughs> they should have acknowledged the question even if they didn't know the answer. Yeah, no kidding, right? Okay, I'm just gonna clear the chat. What are you on about? Okay, oops, I just dropped some purple into my yellow. Let's. I'd like an answer to Lee's Permatech. I have this question too. I like that color. I like the color too. It's a beautiful color. But the guy was going on about how they only use the pig, they only use minerals and whatever. Like, do you mix other minerals in? I like I I would accept a, oh, we are trying to mimic the color of amethyst, so we've mixed in this other mineral. Fine. I'm good with that. Just just tell me. Uh I remember the spin doctor always questioned their Permatech paints and how they would never answer his emails after a point. I think Denise was in the chat too. Um, she didn't have her last name or anything, so it was, I couldn't be sure, but somebody named Denise asked a very Denise sort of question from, uh, about the ethics of their uh minerals like what can you do to, what do you do to ensure that you're getting your minerals from ethical sources and that question did get asked and he sort of dodged it like he said yes this is very important to us uh blah 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 we work directly with mines but like it didn't you know not really no like verifiable like here's how we ensure that, like, here's our standards, here's how we ensure we only work with people who meet this, these criteria, nothing, just like, oh yeah, you know, that's very important to us. Really? Ranty video, guys. He knows a lot about minerals and yep. Political answer. Kathy Jennings at CORE would always respond promptly to my questions. Uh, CORE is very responsive and um, they're straightforward about their answers. I did swatch 
is tiresome, to be honest. Yeah, I did swatch all my paints a year ago and use Lace Pencil for the names, so when I look at the colors, I'm not biased by the brand. It was eye-opening for most colors. That's really interesting. I've, I've sometimes wondered whether, like, there's some implicit bias. I try to be... Like, part of the reason why I, on my labels and stuff, I don't really necessarily put a brand is because I feel like the pigment should matter more than the brand. Um, but I do, I try to be, you know, somewhat, like, conscious of any implicit biases I might have uh, with regards to different... brands, but I, I do wonder sometimes uh, whether, you know, I'm biased for or against brands that are particularly expensive or particularly cheap or particularly available or unavailable to me. Um, I've definitely, like I found, I, I definitely was like averse to trying some paints, like, um, Mission Gold makes some really beautiful paints, but especially earlier on, they've gotten a lot better, but their, their naming conventions used to drive me up the wall, um, where they would just name things wrong, and they put out a video once that really bothered me, where they swatched Mission Gold and Windsor Newton, but they swatched, they would swatch the Mission Gold, like, they called their Thalo Green Viridian, and then they swatched it against uh, Windsor Newton's Viridian, which is made with a Viridian pigment, and say, look, ours is so much more tinting. Like, well, no kidding, it's a thalo. Core seems to be closer to the artists. Yeah, uh, Core, my, my understanding is they're pretty responsive. I haven't spoken to them personally, but I have friends who have. Um, okay, next. Have you got your Core paints, Lana? Not yet, but I think mail takes longer now due to COVID, especially overseas, is shipped for boat. Uh, so Lana, I think that your what you sent me, the, the swatch cards, um, are currently at the post office. My husband is going to go pick them up now. At least I have a package, an unknown package, waiting for me at the post office, uh, which my husband's going to go pick up. And I think, based on all the various things that could have been shipped to me, that it's your package that you sent. Okay, hey, I keep splashing water. Let's get this out of the way. It was very difficult to spot student grade paints. Um, I find that student grade paints make themselves known in diffusion and they also make themselves known in layering more so. But it also depends on which student grade paints and what you're comparing them to. It arrived? Yeah, I, I mean, I hope so. It's at the post office um, and they don't give me terribly much information, but that's about the only thing I can think of that might have gone there. So hopefully, that's your stuff. Um, okay, next. Uh, these two were generously sent to me by Roman Schmal Aquarius for the specific purpose of these light fastness tests. So I spoke to Roman Schmal about, I'm going to perform some light fastness tests and I'm including some of your paints. Do you have a comment? And he said, this is a topic of interest to him. He doesn't have the best answers because he has a limited budget and hasn't been able to do all the testing that he wishes he had. He is getting them tested um, at a university starting this month um, and we'll have those results soon and that he's also done some window light fastness tests. He said that he does not like PY3 as a pigment. He thinks it's too unstable. 
but that he included it in his line because it's so popular that people would not go for a line that didn't have it, which wasn't. I found that to be an interesting statement, but uh, there you go. Uh, so he has hence a yellow light, but that he made his own um, lemon yellow, what he calls a lemon yellow, he made with a different, rarer pigment, which he believes to be more stable. And he sent me both specifically for the purposes of testing, uh, because I was talking about my troubles with lemon yellows to him, um, and he said, he thinks this is more light fast. So PY61 is Roman Schmal's lemon yellow, and we are going to test them both side by side. Well, says I'm a cheapskate, I only use Mio watercolors. How do you find them, Val? Do you enjoy the Mio watercolors? So that's that page. And then I just have one more of watercolor. Um, and this one is a partial because I figured there would probably be some requests. So first there's PR 176. Um, this one's Rose Matter from Mission Gold. Uh, PR-176 is beautiful, but I had heard some horror stories about it, so I haven't added it to my palette, um, but I thought I'd test it out now. There's some sort of mixed reviews on whether this is light fast or not, and etc. It's not super fugitive either way, but it, it might not be um, the world's most light fast pigment. But it's beautiful, don't you think? It's beautiful. I like it. I now optimize rewettable paints. No surprise, artist quality wins there. I'm currently testing Old Holland. Cool, let me know how it goes. Okay, next we have a paint that I fully expect to be not like fast. Uh, where'd it go? Here we go. Nope, that's not it. Okay, so this I fully expect to be not light fast. This is Genuine Indigo from Shinhan, um, PV66. It's beautiful, but it's fugitive. Have you ever tried the original Rose Matter? Yes, I have, and it's also beautiful. I really like the Windsor Newton version, the, the original Rose Matter. It's uh, scented with bergamot. And, uh, I mean, you know, one or two scented watercolors are kind of neat. Um, and it's, it's like a really pretty, um, it's much more subtle than this. Like, this is a very strong tinting paint. Um, original Rose Matter is a much softer color. I'm satisfied with them. They obviously aren't outstanding with professional paints, but they're nice for casual hobbies. Yeah, I mean, it, whatever works for you. Um, to be honest, for for like, if you're going to be doing more of a coloring in style, and I mean that not in a, a negative way at all. Like if you are doing line art and you are filling in between the lines, um, if you're doing that style of work, um, then I think that the difference between professional and student grade is less striking. And in some cases, having 
the uh, less reactive student grade paints might even be an advantage. Um, so it's really just up to you and what you do with your paints and how you work. So for the kinds of layering that I do it, it um, and sort of washes, um, it really is more noticeable whether something is um, student grade or professional, but that's going to be different for everyone and depending on what you're doing. Okay, next we have Aussie Red Gold. I do this sometimes where I trust a manufacturer's label and then I find something out. So I have a friend who a couple years ago, right when Aussie Red Gold was released, was just obsessed with it. It wasn't available at any of the local stores and she tried it out on a swatch she and she just wanted it she just wanted aussie red gold she was so obsessed with aussie red gold and i just sort of brushed it off like yeah yeah it's some kind of mixed pigment whatever um and then i tried it on a swatch sheet <laughs> a few months ago but like wow this is a really pretty color i really want it i got this aussie red gold um it's listed as excellent light fastness, but it has PY83 in it, which um, several people have tested as not so light fast. So this is made with PY83, PR101, and PD19. It's a really beautiful, beautiful shade, but uh, probably not so light fast. Good morning, Joy. I was just dreaming about kittens. That sounds like a really nice dream. Stephen says, I like tubes of cheap Sakura Koi for playing. Often just squeeze onto the paper. I don't put them in a good palette though. They dry like rocks. Need fresh paint every time, but they're so cheap. Cool. I most often use colored pencil as I like to have control, but I like to see watercolors be loose and create wondrous effects. Um, so I used to work with uh, colored pencils because I felt I had more control over them. Over time, I've developed to the point where I find I have more control with watercolor than I do with um, colored pencil. Um, obviously not in, in an application like this, but if I'm using small brushes I have much more control over the, the exact colors that I'm applying and the saturation um, and I can get a much finer point on a brush than I could ever on a pencil. Um, so that's that. How are we? Oh my goodness we really are running low on time. Um, okay. Uh, PB17 is a, you know what, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use, I have a pen of it. I'm going to use this pen palette. Um, PB17 is another one that, this is a discontinued pigment that I'm trying out. Um, it's really beautiful. It's like a cyan blue. Um, apparently it is still available from some uh, like Asian manufacturers like Turner. I believe, um, but uh, I have heard since I bought it that part of the reason why it's been discontinued is it is less um, light fast than other fellows. I just have the one tube, so it's not, I don't have a source for it either. Um, this is Holbang or Iridori, uh, but I figured I'd test it. I'll feel less bad about not having access to it if it turns out to not be really fast. Being a continents fan, I won't say more. I mean, there's lots of people who make beautiful art with cottons. Whatever works for you. I like an initial paint wash and then pencils on top. I think Ev has been doing that recently too. It's a party now, it is a party. Uh, 
and says, kittens, John, does anyone have any experience with using a UV protective spray on watercolor paintings to help offset fugitive pigments? I do not, but that is the next thing I'm planning on trying. Okay. Okay, next we have a bit of a mystery. So, yeah, so I'm planning on trying some soon. I'll choose some particularly fugitive pigments. Like, I'll go grab some opera and some, uh, sorry, indigo and, and alizarin crimson and stuff, and I'll spray one side with UV protective spray and put both in the window. I would say the spray would make the pigment move. I mean, you would wait until it's dry. And then you would spray from far away. It's like it's a fixative. Usually. So it's, it's used to hold the paint in place. If you want genuine indigo, it's going to be in sterling set. Yes, uh, I mean, I don't know that I particularly want genuine indigo, but I'm looking forward to sterling set. Never, never see one from watercolor. Well, you can use just any fixative spray on watercolor. It's not a problem. I do it all the time. I just haven't done, I just haven't used the ones that are specifically listed as UV protective. The spray actually does not, I've tried and I'm having the light pass this test on my window. Oh, yes! Thanks, Lana. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, I really want to get through this. So next I have green gold, um, which is uh, this is Nicolazo yellow. This is PY150, which I have on my palette. But um, Mission Gold calls it green gold, and I've seen from three different people now swatches of it that look green. When I swatch it, it looks yellow. So I'm wondering whether it changes color over time. Um, and so, and if so, then that would be interesting information for um, other Nicolazzo yellows. So this one is something that's, uh, you know, I'm a little scared of what the results are going to be here. Uh, but this definitely looks to me like a real yellow color. I mean, maybe it's a little bit more on the lemon side than some other Nicolazzo yellows, but that looks yellow to me, right? Let's see if it stays that way. You were testing it with a real not light pass pigment test. Yeah, I tested it with several pigments which were not light pass in the test before. This week I had to frame my work's gift and ask for museum UV glass. Yeah, so UV glass is great, um, but it's just very expensive. So it's not something that I can really afford to do for all of my paintings. Um, and then I also am concerned that if I frame something and I sell it to someone and then 10 years from now they redecorate and they change the frame and they buy a new frame, will they buy UV glass? Probably not. And so then I could end up with selling a piece and then they change the frame and if I've used less light fast pigments then it'll fade. PY150 PY129 is greenish. PY129 is greenish. Yes, correct. So PY129 is called green gold, usually. Now, the weird thing about Mission Gold is that they say what they call green gold is not PY129. This is made with PY150. Okay, next we have PY117, which is... Um, a discontinued whole line similar pigment called greenish yellow, which is beautiful and I love, and likewise is probably not as light fast. What 
what is the thallo? What are we talking about? What thallo? Oh, PB17? Yeah, it's, uh, here. <laughs> Antique turquoise from Holbein Eridori. It's PB17, it's a phthalo pigment. But it's like more cyan than uh, other phthalos. It, it honestly, what it looks like is manganese blue, except if it, manganese blue didn't granulate. It's beautiful. feedback on the wax. I, sorry, I feel like I've missed something up here. Oh, Dorland's wax medium. Yes, I've used Dorland's wax medium. I don't know what it's, um, like, effect on light fastness is necessarily, but it's, I've used it. It's nice. So next I have my Nickel Azo Dark. So I made this paint. PG10 is a discontinued pigment though, so you know. I thought it would be fun. This one's not wanting to rewet it really nicely because it's got so much binder in it. Okay. Next we have PB80 uh, Azo Blue, which is another rare discontinued pigment that you can get from Dara Pigments. Um, this one I bought from... I've forgotten the name of the paint maker. Mm -hmm. Um, Colors of the Iron Range. What about this? So this is PB80, and it's somewhere in between a dioxazine and um, like a Hidden Throne Blue. It's beautiful. Okay, and then malachite. I'm gonna test as well. Oh my goodness. Guys, I don't think I'm gonna have time for the inks. Should I do another should I do another video tomorrow with the ink? No, because tomorrow I'm still in a conference. <clears throat> I'm sort of reaching my time limit here. How would I send a sample? To me? What are we doing? Who are we sending? What are we sending samples of? Curious. Yes, I have a I have a five minute limit. Um okay. I have finished all of the swatches that I made for these. I want to get my ink light fastness tests done as well, but I can't do that tomorrow because I'm in a conference all day. Um, like I might drop into Ev's uh, live stream briefly, but in between conference sessions and then I don't have time after. Um, I can do Monday. Monday's a holiday Monday here. If you guys want to do a live stream on Monday, I can do live stream on Monday. We have some curries people, some some Ontario people. Oh. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try to do this again on Monday and finish up with some more of the uh, watercolors, just a couple more watercolors that have been requested, as well as the inks. I can only join from 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so that, that looks for me. See you Monday. Okay, bye. I'm going to go draw some insects now. Thanks for joining. This was really lovely. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. See you Monday.